Now, I don't normally start off my own podcast by plugging another podcast, but in this case, I'm going to do it because it's relevant. I've been listening to this really good and funny podcast called In Voorhees We Trust with Gorley and Rust. It's a really funny podcast about the Friday the 13th series of slasher movies um, with Matt Gorley and Paul Rust. Very funny. Check it out. Guys, you're welcome. And uh, the reason I bring it up is because in the first episode of this podcast, they were talking about something that really caught my attention. And it made me think about something I'm always thinking about, which is how we watch film and maybe how it influences us and how it affects the culture, you know, even in propaganda, like if you look at Lenny Riefenstahl films or The Triumph of the Will or um, any other film where they're trying to get the culture to sort of push in whatever direction the puppet masters try and get the culture to move in the direction that they want them to, the people who are pulling the strings. And I'm not saying that that's always going on uh, or that it's going on in Friday the 13th, but it's something that I think about, and there's something that Gorley and Rust mentioned in their podcast that got me thinking, and it's this. If you go back and watch Friday the 13th movies, it's happening throughout the series, and they also mentioned that it happens in Jaws, too. Quite often before you have a murder scene, like Jason Voorhees killing uh, counselors, or the shark feeding on humans, as you do, um, Quite often what the humans are doing is they're having fun. So um, let's say in Jaws you have the scene, uh, um, I think her name is Chrissy, where she's partying with friends and she and another guy run off to go skinny dipping in the the ocean. You know, they were were drinking, they were uh, high on reefer, and they were having fun. What happens to Chrissy? She dies. And uh, how many times do the camp counselors in Friday the 13th what are they doing? They're always partying. They're, they're naked. They're having sex. They're smoking joints. They're hitting it up. They're living, living it up, having the time of their life. What happens to them? They die. So Jaws, 1975, director Steven Spielberg, and Friday the 13th, the first one, uh, Sean S. Cunningham, uh, 1980. I'm not saying that those two directors purposely put that idea in there that I want it we should teach people that if they let loose and have fun that they're going to get murdered by a guy in a hockey mask or get eaten by a large fish that's that's not what I'm saying but what I think is interesting is that it happens nevertheless and that when you watch that what happens maybe subconsciously I think and this is something that I've just been thinking about since I heard the podcast which is why I'm talking about it if you watch a bunch of kids who are like smoking joints and you know that like a murderer is around because you 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 paid money to see Friday the 13th and you know people are going to get killed. So so people are smoking joints, they're drinking beers. And what do you think in your mind? You start thinking, oh man, these guys are going down. They're going to get killed. How they're going to get killed, I don't know. That's part of the fun, but it's going to happen. You see a, a, a woman or a man in Jaws. They're partying, they're drinking, they're like, hey, let's go for a swim. You're like, oh boy, here comes the cello music. You know what's going to happen. And on the one hand, it's kind of interesting and fun because, you know, it's just a movie. It's just a fun movie. But on the other hand, you start to think, well, how much does that sink in? Do you start to, I'm not saying that you sit home and you smoke a joint or you drink a glass of wine and you think like, well, I'm going to get murdered by the end of the night, so I might as well have a second glass. But it kind of starts to sink in a little bit, I think, and it starts to um, perhaps, I don't know if permeates the right word, but it, it starts to move through the culture, this, this sort of culture that's based on the arrival of the Puritans and this puritanical way of living that we still see and experience uh, in the U.S. at least. I don't know about Canada, maybe. Different story, different strokes. Um, But it's interesting to me to think about how those types of little things that may have not even been intended, and I would guess that they weren't, have such a dramatic effect on the country. Now, something like Reefer Madness, which I think came out in the 20s or something, was pure propaganda. Riefenstahl's Triumph of the Will, pure propaganda. 
And you could probably go on and on listing uh, different types of movies, big movies, movies that made a huge difference uh, uh, or had a huge impact on the culture. But just these little things are almost more worrisome to me because they go unnoticed. And when things go unnoticed but have an impact, that's bad, I think. At least it can be. So all of this got me thinking about the subconscious and, and uh, the propaganda. And of course, a couple of things came to mind. Let me read you something. I found an article in Forbes that you might find interesting. Um, it's sort of about the subconscious and the power that it has over us or the power or the, the, how the realm of the subconscious can be harnessed by us to um, you know, improve our lives in some sort of way. And uh, this is from the article. What many people don't realize is that just as your brain is built to regulate your physical self, as does it try to regulate your mental self. Your mind is constantly filtering and bringing to your attention information and stimuli, it's a fun word, stimuli, that affirms your pre-existing beliefs, known in psychology as confirmation bias, as well as presenting you with repeated thoughts and impulses that mimic and mirror that which you've done in the past. Your subconscious mind is the gatekeeper of your comfort zone. It is also the realm in which you can either habituate yourself to expect and routinely seek the actions that would build and reinforce success, happiness, wholeness, or healing of your life. I'm going to talk about this at some point, but I'm also reading a book by Tony Robbins, which, is, which kind of talks about this, how you can sort of train yourself, whether start out consciously and then it sort of you know goes into your subconscious something i've noticed lately is since i've been reading this book i will notice when people say things that maybe sabotage themselves like if somebody says well i know this isn't going to be a good story but i'm going to tell you anyway i'm like why did you say what did you start out with you never start a story by saying this isn't a good story it makes people not only not want to listen to it but it also sabotages yourself if you know what i mean so I think that's interesting, but it also leads me to Edward Bernays, who was the um, Austrian-American pioneer of public relations. I just said <laughs> public relations and propaganda, uh, who's also the nephew of Sigmund Freud. Quite, uh, quite a family. And uh, you know he was big into propaganda, obviously. And from and I found this article. Um, about him and in propaganda they quoted this from that book the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society those who might manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of the country we are governed our minds and are molded Sorry, we are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, and our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. It is they who pull the wires that control the public mind. So, I finished this painting um, recently. Here it is. And if you look at it, to me this looks very, like it has a strong Japanese or maybe even Chinese influence. And it got me thinking about, and I mentioned this in another podcast, so forgive me if you've heard this already, but it got me thinking about this Asian influence that I've had in my life that was never conscious, as far as I know. Uh, you know, some old furniture in Michigan, a few years ago, I got a hold of it, and there was like this beautiful coffee table, but it clearly had an Asian influence. It had like a, like a curve, it was curved in that sort of way. Uh, and then there were a couple of lamps that were very like Japanese or I don't want to say Chinese, but I think it was Japanese. And so then this is when these were bought, it was probably 20 years ago, uh, just about. And so fast forward to this week when I made this painting and it's still there and I've never been to Japan. I've never thought to myself, I want to go to Japan or I like, like there's something fascinating about the culture. I mean, you know, I love Karate Kid too. And I, I, uh, I enjoy samurai movies and uh, I'm, I'm big into like, you know, Buddhism or, or mindfulness or samurai, things like that. But I've never, I've never thought to myself like this is a really cool 
um, aesthetic approach or perspective, let me try to emulate this. It just happened. So this in conjunction, I don't want to conflate the two, but I'm just saying in conjunction with this film idea that things that we're seeing sticking with us and shaping who we are, it's pretty powerful, I think. Uh, you know, maybe I'm, I'm uh, reaching for something here. Maybe there's nothing there and I'm just rattling the cage and there's nothing inside of it. But uh, I don't think so. I think there's something there. Well, we've come to another conclusion of Pop Culture Fridays. I try to keep them short and sweet for you. I know you have things to do, like lay on the couch or whatever it is that you're doing during the pandemic. You can follow me at Culture Fridays on Twitter, at Pop Culture Fridays on Instagram. Um, you can go to thisiswhereyouare.com. That's the new site. Uh, we've also got a Patreon for Pop Culture Fridays if you feel like donating and keeping the show going. This, this is, isn't free. There's a, there's a huge camera crew that you can't see. They've, I've, got, I've got to respond to, to bags of letters like I'm Santa Claus. It's a lot of work, man. But I hope you're well. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts. You should message me or comment below. What do you think? Is there a movie or even something other than that that's influenced you subconsciously that you've noticed or that after seeing this, do you th is there something that comes to mind that surfaces now that we've been talking about it, you and I, you and me on this show? Let me know. I'd like to hear about it or send me something at, uh, at uh, popculturefridays at gmail.com. All right. Until next time, my friends, be aware. It's around you.